gonna explode. Oh, wrong way. Uh, this thing's due for an oil change. I'll have to do that soon. This thing's been awesome. Definitely, uh, definitely handy, as you can imagine. Two thousand and eight. Two thousand eight. So two thousand eight three hundred one point eight C. Yes. Little caterpillar. Neat little machine. What year is this? This is a thirteen. Two thousand thirteen Gator. Mm -hmm. Pro Gator. Uh, Pro Gator. Twenty thirty A. Diesel, four wheel drive. Dump bed. Dump bed. Dump bed now. So the first job that we wanted to get knocked out was widening our access to the back of the shop. Uh, what little digging I'd done in this back corner was really just enough to squeeze that excavator a little bobcat through and not enough to get a full size pickup back here. That's what we decided to do first, widen the access through here and then focus on putting in a couple drains. That was the plan anyway. And don't let this little piece of equipment size fool you. That thing was really effective. Uh, surprising, uh, uh, in my opinion, for its size. So digging on this property is, is definitely tough. It's a mixture of just clay and rocks. Some big rocks, some small rocks, but they're everywhere. You can see Al back there with the excavator. He's really just picking at the hillside, trying to break loose or dislodge you know, some of the rocks so he can try to get a bite into it and remove some dirt. It worked really well. <laughs> it's a lot better than hand digging, but it was still, you know, kind of stop and go for the most part. I'd try to get a bucket with the uh, with the bobcat, and, you know, just kind of digging the side of the bucket into the hillside some, kind of whittling away, and uh, you know, I'd pick up what uh, he dug out and take it and dump it. We did this over and over and over again. And eventually we got dug back to a point that I thought was good enough, you know, wide enough that I could get back to the back of the shop easily. And we called it good and decided we'd uh, start on our, on digging the drain trench. But we first had to remove a tree that's back here where Al's digging that was, you know, would have caused us problems otherwise because we had destabilized it so much. It's warm up. It is. The sun is is strong today. That's it's good. Okay by me.
that's just a whole lot of heck. That's a lot of heck. Oh, that's quite good. Is this tall enough to flip it over? Well, it's tall enough. I think so. Okay. I mean, I'll have quite a bit of force on it. Yep. Mmm. Mm. I want this chain to fall on you. <laughs> you know, again, I will say it in a very nice and pleasant way. So much better this you than me. I, I just, I would not be effective. I mean, heads up. It's time to tighten up the chain. Yep. Got this tree down man it was definitely tough uh, you know it really didn't have any option you could have probably climbed it and topped it out but we cut it hooked chains to it and pulled it out at the bottom had a couple chains actually hooked to it to where it couldn't fall out uh, it couldn't kick out at the bottom and we just tied the uh, bobcat to it and kind of pulled it and laid it down and get it on, down on the ground and then cut it up and get it out of our way that was a tough one to get out.
it would have took me three days to do this by hand, Al. Yeah, right. <laughs> So this is a zip level. It's a Technodia Pro 2000. It checks the height of your ground. Very similar to a laser, but much easier to use. I'd never seen one like this before. This is Al's, and um, I thought it was really neat. Uh, some of you, I'm sure, have seen them before, but it's got a pressurized fluid, I believe, in this line, and a very sensitive pressure transducer in the head here. So you just calibrate it all at you know ground level at the same same height, and. Uh, you can walk around, it's a one-man job, very easy, and you don't have to worry about being able to see the laser. I've got a laser, and sometimes they can be pretty tough, but this thing's definitely a good tool. Uh, I think they're a little pricey, but from what I've seen, just, uh, you know, poking around with this thing, I'd rather use this than a laser any day, and it's accurate to within a tenth of an inch over a hundred foot, which is, you know, good enough for, for most most jobs anyway thought that was neat and uh you know worth sharing
Well, we've made some really good progress on, you know, the access back through here. Lots of excavation. We pulled out a lot of dirt. You know, this is going to be an ongoing issue, obviously. It's going to slough off and get down here, but <clears throat> that's not that big a deal. That's something I'll have to maintain. I considered a wall here, you know, like a retaining wall, but nothing's going to hold back this hillside. You know, just push over whatever I put there. So ongoing maintenance will be required to keep it clean down here. But anyway, we we're going to put some drains here, right? French drains. That was the plan. That was one of the main reasons for this excavation, was to dry this area up. But we ran into a small problem, and that is this is solid bedrock. So this side of the building uh, is built on a solid sheet of rock. I guess they excavated down and hit this and stopped. So without some sort of carbide toothed trenching machine, uh, not a ditch witch, you know, you're not getting through this. Not worth it. So the plan is to clean this off, a lot of the mud off of it, and then gravel it heavy and roll with it. Um, the sheet of rock does end up here where our trench is. That's going to take some water out. I'm going to be tying into the gutter, um, the new gutters that I hopefully will have here, and you know take that water out to the creek. But we've got a natural spring here, I guess you'd call it. What it is is all the water from the hillside gets down to this bed rock layer and then runs out and it happens to run out here that's why it stayed so wet this just continues to fill up so there's our trench that we've started there's Al just digging away um, it's already water is already running in it so what I probably will do is do a drain across through here across the front I mean, that's all I can do. And then uh, tie into it, obviously, with the gutter and try to collect that rain or that uh, spring water there. But let's take a walk of the trench. We hit a huge rock here that we jackhammered out. Or most of it so far. You're making gravel out of it, Al. That's right. out of big rocks yeah and this is really uh, I've been a tough ditch it's got several layers so the driveway at one time you can see the driveways up here right there's layer of, of gravel down there so the original driveway was much much lower and they brought in some dirt been, no, you're fine. It's been exciting, that's for sure. <laughs> Tree roots, rocks, mixture of some dirt that they brought in, obviously. The only thing we really have here is clay, like this, which is a nightmare to dig. It sticks to your digging tools. Uh, but there is some actual dirt down there. Probably when they raised this driveway up a bit. That's where we're at. We're getting close to... Uh, uh, checking the elevation of the trench and laying some drain pipe in it. And fill it all back up again. Yep. Come this way. I mean, the good news is if it's not quite long enough, you can add another couple of pieces to it. Yeah, not a problem. Looks Ideally, good. Ideally, might as well just do it all right now. 
We can bend it too a little bit against the way from the wall so it curves a little bit. So I want to say hi to Sessa, a viewer of the channel. Walnut also says hi. <laughs> Squirrels in the bird feeder. Real common problem. <laughs> So the four inch Schedule 40 PVC that runs across the driveway. I just filled it all in with gravel due to how rocky the ground was. I didn't want to throw that in on top of that pipe, all that big rock. So just used drain stone to fill in the entire trench. Kind of spread out some gravel to take care of a little of the mud. We got over, well, about an inch and a half of rain last night. So all that's left is to tie in what little French drain I'm going to have here. Uh, went from wanting a hundred feet of French drain to settling for six feet. That's better than nothing. At least my gutter will have something to run down into and I can always add on to this or you know use the some of the drain material that I have for the back of the shop. But now the corrugated pipe that's going to go in here has to hook to four inch PVC. Uh, they are special fittings to make that happen. And that are these guys here. Uh, they're very proud of them. I was surprised at what a fitting like that <laughs> cost. But just slides into the PVC and then this just pushes into the end of your corrugated pipe. So I had to actually order those. Well, my local uh, hardware store did not have them. So that's it. Clean out the rest of this drain. What? caved in, put in my filter fabric, the pipe, and then the stone, and that will move some water. It is a somewhat of a natural grade down through here, although, you know, water does obviously pool in places, but it should get into this and get out.
So gross weight, uh, 37.1 ton. The tar weight was 13.93 tons, or 14 tons. And the net weight, 23.17 tons. That is a lot of tons. 442 dollars. 442 dollars. Fill this thing up. It's like there's diesel right there, man. I just filled it up. You sneaky little son of a gun, you. Yeah, thanks anyway. <laughs>
right guys, that's it. I want to say a huge thanks to Al for all the help on this project. We got this hillside cleaned out. Didn't get the drains I wanted, but you know, you can't, it's just not easy to dig through a shelf of rock that runs the entire length of the shop just for some drainage. Luckily, it does have a natural slope to it that runs to what little drain I'll have. Plus my gutters tie into it, so you know, it'll, it'll help if nothing else. Making really good progress on the on the foundation. It's moving a lot faster than what I thought. Got me a new load of rock in, so I'll be able to rock this good and heavy. And I'll be able to rock this back here behind the shop as well. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, and subscribers, like I always say. You know, anybody who supported me on this project. That's it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.